Good morning. This is Mission Control Houston on Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. I'm Nessa Shinequiverine. We are live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room with a live view of Northrop Grumman's Cygnus car hookup vehicle in the grasp of the Canada 2 robotic arm. This morning, we're bringing you live coverage of the release and departure of Cygnus from the International Space Station. Today's release is being controlled by ground controllers here in Mission Control Houston. Teams here are being led today by Flight Director Adi Bulos, who is currently taking a go-no-go -no -go poll for flight controllers around the room for release. He's joined on console to his right by Capcom or Capsule Communicator Scott Sigati. You hear calls from Capcom to the station crew from time to time today as teams go through the procedures for Cygnus's release. Today's visiting vehicle officer is Tom Thomas Castleberry. He'll be communicating directly with Northrop Grumman's flight controllers in Dulles, Virginia, relaying vehicle status and updates back to teams here in Mission Control Houston. And leading the team in Dulles, Virginia, is Northrop Grumman's mission director, Paul Brower. Teams in Dulles are keeping tabs on the Cygnus vehicle and will take full control of the spacecraft once it crosses over the approach ellipsoid today. The approach ellipsoid serves as an imaginary boundary around the station that is referred to as the neighborhood of the International Space Station. Four kilometers long, two kilometers wide, and two kilometers deep, the approach ellipsoid governs all vehicles coming or going from the orbiting laboratory. So again, once Cygnus departs the neighborhood this morning, joint operations will end and Northrop Grumman's team will take full control over the spacecraft. The release window today is set to open up around 11.23 a.m. Central Time today, putting Cygnus on track for an on-time release around 11.30 a.m. Central Time. Earlier this morning, flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston used the Space Station's Canada Arm 2 robotic arm to unbolt Cygnus from the Earth-facing port of the station's Unity module and maneuvered the vehicle into its release position where it sits now. Cygnus's journey to the International Space Station began on February 20th when the spacecraft launched from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The Antares rocket lifted off, the International Space, lifted off to the International Space Station, carrying about 8,000 pounds of science, research, crew supplies, and vehicle hardware. Cygnus arrived to its capture point two days later on February 22nd with NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins at the controls of the Canada 2 robotic arm for capture as Soichi Noguchi of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency backed him up and monitored systems. A few hours after capture, Cygnus was installed to the Earth-facing port, Earth-facing side of the station's Unity module where it stayed for 127 days. Each Cygnus spacecraft is named for an influ influential individual in the world of spaceflight, and the Cygnus spacecraft for this space station resupply mission is dedicated to NASA mathematician Katherine Johnson. Johnson, a black woman, broke through barriers of gender and race, calculating orbital mechanics for some of the first U.S. human spaceflights. During her 35-year career at NASA, she calculated the orbital mechanics and trajectories of various U.S. missions to space, such as Alan Shepard's first mission to space and John Glenn's first flight to orbit. Katherine Johnson died on February 24, 2020, at the age of 101.
There will be a couple milestones today after Cygnus is released. The first milestone we will come to is when Cygnus departs the Keep Out Sphere, which is an invisible line about 200 meters from the International Space Station. After Cygnus departs the Keep Out Sphere, the next milestone will be when it exits the approach ellipsoid or the neighborhood of the station. Once Cygnus exits the neighborhood, joint operations will end and Northrop Grumman teams will take full control over the spacecraft. Our coverage will end there, but its mission won't. After departure, Cygnus will begin its secondary mission, deploying a series of CubeSats. Cygnus will deploy five Cube satellites, including the Ionosphere Thermosphere Scanning Photometer for IO Neutral Studies, or IT spins which will add to researchers fundamental understanding of Earth's ionosphere and the Khalifa University Student Satellite 2 or MySat 2 which will train graduate students through the development and evaluation of itself its software. Cygnus will end its journey disposing of nearly 7,180 pounds of trash the most ever during its fiery entry into the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific on July 1st. The view we're getting now is a view of what's called the RPOP, or Rendezvous Proximity Operations Program, on a laptop in a workstation inside the cupola on board the International Space Station. This is the same view the Expedition 65 NASA flight engineer, Megan MacArthur, is seeing now as she monitors systems and backs up ground controllers here in Mission Control Houston. MacArthur launched us alongside NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough, ESA, or European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Toma Pesquet and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Aki Hoshide on April 23rd from the Kennedy Space Flight Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The mission known as NASA, NASA's SpaceX Crew 2 docked to the International Space Station on April 24th and is set for a six, six month science mission. The Crew 2 mission is the second of six crewed missions NASA and SpaceX will fly as a part of the agency's commercial crew program. Again, standing by now for confirmation, Cygnus is ready for release with MacArthur monitoring in the cupola.
If you are just joining us, we are live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room with a live view of the Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo vehicle in the grasp of the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm. This morning, we're bringing you live coverage of the release and departure of Cygnus from the International Space Station. Today's release is being controlled by ground controllers here in Mission Control Houston. Teams here are being led today by Flight Director Adi Bulos, who's currently taking, who has recently taken a go-no-go -go poll for flight controllers around the room for release. He's joined on console by Capsule Communicator Scott Sigati. You'll hear calls from Scott to the state to the station crew from time to time today as teams go through procedures for Cygnus's release. Today's visiting vehicle officer is Thomas Castleberry. He'll be communicating directly with Northrop Grumman's flight controllers in Dulles, Virginia, relaying vehicle status and updates back to the teams here in Mission Control Houston. And leading the team in Dulles, Virginia is Northrop Grumman's mission director, Paul Brower. Teams in Dulles are keeping tabs on the Cygnus vehicle and will take full control of the spacecraft once it crosses over the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid serves as an imaginary boundary around the station that is referred to as the neighborhood of the International Space Station. The approach ellipsoid governs all vehicles coming or going from the orbiting laboratory. So once again, once Cygnus departs the neighborhood this morning, joint operations will end and Northrop Grumman teams will take full control over the spacecraft. The release window is set up to open around 11.23 a.m. Central Time today putting Cygnus on track for an on-time release around 11.30 a.m. Central Time. Earlier this morning, flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston used the space station's Canada Arm 2 robotic arm to unbolt Cygnus from the Earth-facing port of the station's Unity module and maneuver the vehicle into its release position where it sits now.
SAVIS's journey to the International Space Station began on February 20th when the spacecraft launched from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The Antares rocket lifted off to the International Space Station carrying about 8,000 pounds of science, research, crew supplies, and vehicle hardware. Cygnus arrived to its capture point two days later on February 22nd with NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins at the controls of the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm for capture. A few hours after capture, Cygnus was installed to the Earth-facing side of the station's Unity module where it had stayed for 127 days. Each Cygnus spacecraft is named after an influential individual in the world of spaceflight. And this Cygnus cargo spacecraft for this resupply mission to the space station is dedicated to NASA mathematician Katherine Johnson. Johnson, a black woman, broke through the barriers of gender and race, calculating orbital mechanics for some of the first U.S. human spaceflights. During her 35-year career at NASA, she calculated the orbital mechanics and trajectories of various U.S. missions to space, such as Alan Shepard's first mission to space and John Glenn's first flight to orbit. Katherine Johnson died on February 24, 2020, at 101 years old. There will be a couple milestones today after Cygnus is released. The first milestone will come when Cygnus departs the Keep Out Sphere, which is an invisible line about 200 meters from the International Space Station. After Cygnus departs the Keep Out Sphere, the next milestone will be when it exits the approach ellipsoid or the neighborhood of the station. Once Cygnus exits the neighborhood, joint operations will end and Northrop Grumman teams will take full control of the spacecraft. Our coverage will end there, but its mission won't. After departure, Cygnus will begin its tr secondary mission, deploying a series of CubeSats. Cygnus will deploy five Cube satellites, including the Ionosphere Thermosphere Scanning Photometer for IO Neutral Studies, or IT spins, which will add to researchers' fundamental understanding of Earth's ionosphere, and the Khalifa University Students Satellite 2, or MySat 2, which will train graduate students through the development and the evaluation of its software. Cygnus will end its journey disposing of nearly 7,180 pounds of trash during its fiery re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean on July 1st. Again, standing by now for confirmation, Cygnus is ready for release with MacArthur monitoring in the cupola. Station Houston on two, back with you, Megan. You are go for Cygnus configuration checks in step two of 1.602.
Happy Step 2 and work. Houston Station, Cygnus configuration checks complete. Crew is ready for release and departure. Copy that. Thanks, Megan. And there you just heard Meg MacArthur confirm that Cygnus is ready for departure. We are looking for an on-time departure today at 11.30 a.m. Central Time. We're currently in a satellite, a loss of signal where satellites are switching. We'll have signal back shortly. You are currently seeing a live view of the control room in Dulles, Virginia, where Northrop Grumman, Paul Brower, is directing this mission. Teams in Dulles are keeping tabs on Cygnus vehicle and will take full control. You are, we are go for Cygnus departure on time. You can perform steps three and four in procedure 1.602. We go on time, steps three and four in work. The release window opened up at 11.23 a.m. Central Time today, putting Cygnus on track for an on-time release around 11.30 a.m. Central Time.
ISS thrusters are inhibited and ground M1 is go for release on time. If you're just joining us, we are live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room with a live view of Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo vehicle in the grasp of the Canada 2 robotic arm. This morning, we're bringing you live coverage of the release and departure of Cygnus from the International Space Station. Proceeding with release, Megan. Release commanded. Copy, I see it. Snares open, begin monitoring for drift out. The snares are now open. Proceeding with back away. And has exited the lee. And release has been confirmed at 11.32 a.m. Central Time as Cygnus and the International Space Station were flying 270 statute miles over southern Wyoming.
We're getting a live view from the Canada Arm 2 of, this, of Cygnus, now backing away from the International Space Station. We are now standing by for confirmation that Cygnus has started its three-minute departure burn, which will move the spacecraft a safe distance away from the station outside the approach ellipsoid, where joint operations will end and Northrop Grumman teams will take full control over the spacecraft. You are now getting a live view of the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston just released the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. Back away in progress. Copy. And Houston looks like greater than four and a half meters of clearance. I'll send the depart command. Copy, Megan. We are now standing by for confirmation. Cygnus depart commanded. Farewell to the SS Catherine Johnson. Copy, Megan. Depart commanded. And as we say farewell to the SS Catherine Johnson, we want to extend a big thank you to the crew and ground teams across the world for all the hard work and extend a big congratulations on the completion of yet another successful Cygnus mission. Great words, Houston, we concur. Cygnus departure burn is in progress. Monitor departure burn in step five of 1.602. Copy. 
and we have confirmation the spacecraft's three-minute departure burn is underway. Again, this... And I did not copy your last. Just letting you know, back away is complete, Megan. Copy. This burn will move Cygnus a safe distance away from the station, crossing over the approach ellipsoid, which serves as a mythical cone around the station, considered the neighborhood of the International Space Station. Once Cygnus departs the neighborhood, Northrop Grumman teams will take full control over the spacecraft for it to begin its secondary mission of system tests and CubeSat deployments spanning over the next couple of days. We're now standing by for a departure of burn to end. Ground control is here in Mission Control Houston. Reporting performance is nominal so far. So I'm um, two for ICF troubleshoot. We are with you on two, Aki. Again for your go on step one. You got to go. And Megan, and Megan on space to ground two, an offer. We can take control of the cameras if you like. You can have the cameras. Copy, will do. And Megan on two, Cygnus departure burn is complete. You go to perform step six in 1.602. And FYI, Cygnus has exited the 200 meter keep out sphere. Copy step uh, six and um, understand exited the keep out sphere. Thanks. We have confirmation the departure burn is now complete. And that was Capcom Scott Sigati confirming Cygnus is now outside the keep out sphere. Followed. Again, the keep out sphere exit is one of the milestones built into Cygnus's departure today. Cygnus has now completed the first of two of the milestones. We are waiting and on 
the exit of the approach ellipsoid today. If you're just joining us, we are watching live coverage of this departure, the release and departure of the Cygnus spacecraft today, dubbed the SS Catherine Johnson. So far, Cygnus was released from the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm at 11.32 a.m. Central Time as the International Space Station and Cygnus were flying 270 statute miles above southern Wyoming. It then conducted a three-minute departure burn to move a safe distance away from the space station, and Cygnus is now heading toward the final milestone of today, the approach ellipsoid. Once Cygnus crosses over the approach ellipsoid out of the vicinity of the International Space Station, joint operations will end and Northrop Grumman teams will take full control over the spacecraft. Until then, NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur will continue to monitor systems from the cupola on board the International Space Station. <laughs> Station on two for Toka. With you on two, Mark, go ahead. The, uh, for the Toka closeout, the talk is 446, the tick is 1003, and the talk RSD is 3%. Copy tick tock and tick tock again. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. After Cygnus departs the approach ellipsoid, or exits the approach ellipsoid, it will be in a secondary mission where 
Once it's a safe distance away from the station, Cygnus will deploy five cube satellites, including the ionosphere thermosphere scanning photometer for ion neutral studies or IT spins, which will add the researchers add to researchers fundamental understanding of Earth's ionosphere and the Khalifa University satellite too or MySat too, which will train graduate students through the development and evaluation of its software. Cygnus delivered about 8,000 pounds of science, research, crew supplies, and vehicle hardware to the International Space Station on February 22nd. Of that 8,000 pounds was about 2,500 pounds of science investigations. One notable investigation sent up on this mission was a device to measure muscle strength in worms to test whether decreased expression of muscle proteins is associated with decreased strength, which could support development of countermeasures to help maintain crew member health. A good portion of research aboard the station is dedicated to understanding how the human body adapts and thrives in microgravity. There's also a great deal of parallels between health challenges in space and different ailments back here on Earth, with some space based treatments translating directly to help people on Earth. The International Space Station continues to serve as an essential test bed for people on Earth and in orbit as we continue to move forward, placing the next, the first woman and person of color on the moon by 2024 and eventually onto Mars. Again, we're standing by for confirmation that Cygnus has crossed the approach ellipsoid.
Again, we're standing by for confirmation that Cygnus has crossed the approach ellipsoid. Station Houston on two, Cygnus has exited the approach ellipsoid. Station copies. And that was Capcom Scott Sigati confirming Cygnus is now outside of the approach ellipsoid, meaning Cygnus has now left the vicinity of the space station. This is the point where joint operations end, and Northrop Grumman teams will take full control over the spacecraft. Northrop Grumman's mission director, Paul Brower, and team will now take full control over the spacecraft. Recapping the events from today, earlier this morning, flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston used the Space Station's Canada 2 robotic arm to unbolt Cygnus from the Earth-facing port of the station's Unity module and maneuver the vehicle into its release position. With Megan MacArthur monitoring in the cupola, Cygnus was set free at 11.32 a.m. Central Time as the International Space Station and Cygnus were flying 270 statute miles over southern Wyoming. Cygnus then conducted a three-minute departure burn to move a safe distance away from the station. Seconds after the departure burn ended, Cygnus exited the keep-out sphere about 200 meters away from the International Space Station. The final milestone came just a minute ago when Cygnus crossed the, over the approach ellipsoid, leaving the neighborhood of the station, where joint operations ended and Northrop Grumman teams took full control over the spacecraft. Once far enough away, Cygnus will begin a secondary mission deploying five CUBE satellites. After orbiting Earth for a few extra days conducting system tests and CubeSat deployments, Cygnus will end its journey disposing of nearly 7,180 pounds of trash during its fiery re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean on Thursday, July 1st. With Cygnus now safely departed from the vicinity of the International Space Station after its 127-day stay, that'll wrap up our release coverage for today. Be sure to tune in to the Progress 78 launch coverage today. Our coverage will begin around 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're looking for a launch around 6.27 p.m. Central Time, and docking coverage will begin on July 1st, beginning around 7.15 p.m. Central Time, for a docking at 8.02 p.m. Central Time. Thank you for watching. This is Mission Control Houston.